our scripture lesson today is from the very first book of the Bible, Genesis. We start with chapter 18, we go through 1 through 15, and then we jump to chapter 21 and do 1 through 7 in that chapter. So the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of the Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. And he looked up and saw three men standing near him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. <coughs> and Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. Well, they said to Abraham, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you, and in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Oh yes, you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he as had as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he, as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, last week, we began our, our fall sweep of the Bible by starting with the second creation story, the one where God takes a rib from the man and makes for him a suitable companion. Actually, more than just suitable, Adam is overjoyed with God's new creation. And I can picture him laughing as he says, yes, God, you Finally got it right. 
So we can say that this was the very first family that God created. So this morning we learned about another important family in the Bible. The first family of the Israelites. God calls Abraham and Sarah to follow God's call. God wants to bless them so they can be a blessing to all the families of the earth. Well, very early on, God sees that Sarah is unable to have children. And so he makes what seems like an unlikely promise to them. He says that they will have an heir of their own, and their descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky. That's a whole lot of grandchildren. <laughs> but God gave Abraham and Sarah this promise when their bodies were young and healthy, so when they had enough energy to run after a little one. But the longer the years go by without a child, the harder it gets for them emotionally. So not only does Sarah feel great discouragement within herself, but the women around her ridicule and humiliate her. At one point, Sarah tries to take matters into her own hands and, and encourages her husband Abraham to have a baby with their servant, Hagar. But even that backfires on her. Sarah especially has suffered a lot over these many years. So when Sarah laughs when she hears these three visitors tell Abraham that she will finally bear a child, I don't think it was a happy laugh. I think it might have been more like, yeah, right, are you crazy? I'm too old to have a baby now. It is not laughter full of joy, but it's laughter that's filled with years of pain and disappointment. It seems Sarah might have gotten a little cynical in her old age. I think what has happened is that Sarah has taken her eyes off of God. She doesn't believe God's promises anymore. And who can blame her? 65 years is a long time to wait for a promise. She has given up on God. But God says, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Well, you know, some days I have to wonder about that. How do you continue to have hope in God when everything around you seems like a huge mess and things seem to be spinning out of control? How do you continue to have hope in God when people get sick and get in terrible accidents and people suffer from emotional and physical stress? How do you continue to have hope in God when nothing seems to be going the way you want it to go and you have one disappointment after another? And how do you know when it's time to give up on a dream and go on a different path? How are you supposed to be realistic on the one hand but also have hope that God will take your situation and bring God's blessings upon it. After all, with God, nothing is impossible. This past week, our son-in-law is at the Mayo Clinic for his current health concerns. Now, he's a strong, hard-working 40-year-old who loves his wife and his three little girls. And this fall, he was looking forward to fulfilling his lifelong dream of owning his own business. They had it all planned out. They were looking forward to this new chapter in their lives. And then he gets sick. And it's hard for them to understand why this is happening to them. 
So I hear frustration, fear, and some anger in their voices. In times of crisis, some people hang on to God even tighter, while other people give up on God altogether. I know people who have given up on God a long time ago. And the tragic thing is that they might die without ever knowing that joy and that comfort and that guidance that God gives to each one of us. But before I'm critical of, of someone else, I'm reminded that I don't always manage to trust God in all things either. It's very easy to put my focus on my fear, my frustrations, my inadequacies. And when I do that, I start to feel like I'm inside a dark box where there's no way out. I can feel overwhelmed and hopeless. But God's response to Abraham and Sarah shows us the capacity God has to break open whatever has been closed in our lives and bring new life 